So this one, I think, is actually something that's kind of gone uh, relatively under the radar compared to the major hardware announcements. And I talked about this earlier. It's the concept that um, everything could be a steam machine because they've introduced uh, an ARM translation layer, which essentially means that you'll be able to run your x86 games, your Steam library, effectively, on ARM devices. The implications for this are massive. Um, we've got lots of uh, supporter questions about this one. This one from Peter Leatherbarrow. Hello there. The Steam frame with its ARM processor can supposedly run APK files. This got me wondering, uh, would it be possible for the work done on the Proton slash FEX FEX x86 emulation layer to be used one day to run Steam Windows games directly on Android devices? existing phones, tablets, gaming devices, and then hypothetically a Steam store and a launcher itself, or does the emulation layer only work when the operating system itself has been built with it in mind? Um, Royale asks, hello, gentlemen, exclamation point. Uh, with Valve seemingly being quite committed to supporting ARM, given their involvement slash investment in FEX, what are the chances of them using it in future hardware other than Steam Frame? Do you think it is at all plausible for a Steam Deck 2? Um, is there currently any non-Apple ARM chip out there that would match the desired power performance profile for such a device? Uh, 1040 STF asks, with SteamOS coming to ARM, could it mean that Mac, silicon hardware, could finally turn into great Steam machines? Are there any obstacles that are still in the way? Um, and Don't Be a Richard asks, Valve clearly has put a lot of effort into its ARM slash x86 translation layer to support an ARM chipset in the headset. Is this an indicator that Valve would be strongly considering ARM for a future handheld? At the very least, it provides some greater flexibility now in relation to chip suppliers, especially as they target low-powered raw options. It looks like a lot of work to develop the translation layer for just a headset. So a broader adoption of ARM by Valve in its own hardware, or if they make SteamOS available to other OEMs, seems to make sense as a future direction. Also, I appreciate the team will be under strict direction from Valve not to talk, talk about this. So in the interests of discreetness, blink twice if they showed you a Steam Deck 2 during the visit. Well, I'm not no more quite sure how to handle that because we've kind of we've got a biological necessi necessity to blink. So, uh, so, no, we didn't see anything on Steam Deck 2. Um, Oliver, where do we... Let's start with the whole handheld side of things. I don't think that the next Steam Deck will be using an ARM chip. Do you think it will? I don't think it will be. I think it will be x86. I think it will continue with an AMD APU. That's just my supposition here. But the fact that it's possible and the fact they could ship, you know, again, potentially depending on how this FEX translation layer fares and actual, actual retail software, not just curated experiences they were showing me because they did show me games like Ghost Town, games like Moss, um, games like Hades. Well, I shouldn't say games like because those were just the games they showed me. But uh, those games were all running in terrific form on the, um, on the Steam frame but I wouldn't necessarily expect that from all software. They did basically say their compatibility was improving day by day and that it was rare to find a title that was outright not working. And it was uh, you know, somewhat more common maybe to find titles that had significant performance issues, but they were kind of ironing those out day by day and they'd improved a great deal over the past year and a half, two years since they started working on this effort. So I think that um, it's, it's potentially viable here. In terms of some of these other questions though, like. I, I do find the idea of uh, Macs turning into steam machines to be quite interesting, but, but but I don't think it's necessary. Like if you look at GPTK and obviously Code Weavers, they collaborate heavily with Valve on Proton and they make crossover, right? Which is quite good as far as I understand it for gaming on, on Macs nowadays. I've used it a little bit myself. I've not really reviewed it in depth. Uh, or any similar kind of effort in depth for the past two years. So maybe I should go back to that at some point once I have a little bit of free time between all of our uh, Valve escapades and other projects. But um, but yeah, I would like to go back and, and actually see how that fares in, in commercial software. And I also think that maybe there's some potential for Valve, instead of shipping SteamOS, maybe they ship some kind of Code Weavers based translation layer with their titles to run on Macs and they kind of provide it on an experimental basis instead of giving it that much validation, that much software validation, that much of like a verified program, things like this. Maybe that could be interesting. I, I'm not exactly sure where you'd go with that, but like it does feel like a project that's on the on the verge of commercial viability just to distribute with individual games, just as like kind of, kind of a wrapper beyond what people are doing commercially with games separately. So I think that would be a 
think that would be quite interesting, but I don't think SteamOS is the answer there. I think something <laughs> narrower is probably the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my concern about um, Steam Deck 2, I mean, it does have a CPU overhead, mm -hmm. um, this new translation layer, and so does Proton, right? So there's the danger that you'd actually be using a lot of CPU performance just to get the games actually running. Mm -hmm. I think that would be my concern there. I do think that sticking with x86 for Steam Deck 2 makes a lot of sense because, you know, a Qualcomm embracing ray tracing and machine learning in the same way that AMD is with a, with a specific kind of gaming focus there. You know, it's not as if Qualcomm has a project Amethyst set up with a, with a console manufacturer or any kind of gaming partner to actually push boundaries there. Whereas, you know, it's, it's core to AMD's business really to have that um, partnership with the consoles. I'm not sure it's a good fit, uh, but obviously I do think that you will see um, people that's the other thing, of course, you know, the concept of having a, a separate store on a, a mobile phone, Steam, I, I think that's eminently viable. I mean, it's kind of like all bets are off in terms of performance, but, you know, it's there if you want it. I think that would be a pretty cool thing. And obviously, you know, those processors, processors are just going to get more and more performant over time. Um Hmm, Alex, what do you make about this? Well, I see this like inroads, like... Uh like Oliver talked about at the beginning of this video, is a threat to Microsoft's uh, platform. Uh, but here, it's it's a bit it's a bit different because the this, oh, that was, that's wrong language. Currently, there's only one really big company sponsoring all these devices in general that we've been talking about, and that's AMD. And as soon as ARM is able to run more software that was developed for a Windows PC in an x86, x64 environment, well, then a lot of other people that don't have the x86 license become more viable. And I really do think about NVIDIA here, where if this is performant and compatible with a lot of PC games, then this could be a way for NVIDIA to be releasing Steam OS devices in the future or Linux-based devices in the future based upon either their own ARM collaboration, uh, their own, sorry, their own ARM uh, manufacturing, or in the future in general, they don't need to use this because maybe they have that Intel uh, cooperation that they're going to be putting out SOCs with uh, too. Uh, but I feel, I feel like this is just another way to actually broaden the market for, for Linux to a variety of devices where currently it's really, really AMD dominated. Um, and that's kind of like one of the reasons why it is a little disappointing with the Steam machine, just because there's only so many um, things they can pick and choose from, from the AMD portfolio and have it be cheap. Uh, where, whereas, you know, they can't go to someone else and say, hey, we'll actually make this device with someone else. Could you lower your price? You know, they don't really have that ability. There's not that like competition to allow that thing to occur. And I think this, if ARM was available, it would, it would have a new bargaining chip on the table for hardware manufacturing in general, as well as the, the user then in the future will have have more devices. Uh, the closest thing that we haven't reviewed officially on the channel would be the the Claw, the MSI Claw Two, I believe it is from uh, from Intel. Like that is like I would say the most competitive non AMD thing we've seen uh, that occupies a Steam Deck like size and power uh, constraint. Uh, but uh, that's really about it. And with, I think we need more of these devices in the future, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, and hopefully fax uh, adds to that. Right. Okay. Well, it's not the MSI Claw 2. It's the MSI Claw 8 AI Oh, my sorry. Yes. It, <laughs> the name. Right here. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah, in terms of this sort of domination of AMD in the handheld space, I've got to admit this Claw is really, really good. It's it's really, really nice. Um, it's performant but sort of between Z1 Extreme and Z2 Extreme. Uh, it can go faster. For example, it runs Avatar better, as you would kind of expect, bearing in mind the ray tracing uh, foundation um, of, of that particular game. And um, yeah, Lunar Lake is actually a really, really good chipset, really power efficient. It's interesting that you know any kind of um, power draw comparison with AMD is kind of not particularly valid because Lunar Lake actually includes memory power draw in its in its metric 
whereas AMD is separate. And yet this thing at 20 watts is doing some really, really good stuff. In some titles, you could actually max out GPU clock at 20 watts, mm. uh, including the memory. It's, it's really, really good. And obviously, uh, we're expecting uh, Panther Lake from um, uh, Intel to hit next year. And that's offering, a, uh, according to leaks, a potential 50% improvement in uh uh, performance, whether that actually translates into game performance re remains to be seen. But yeah, competition for AMD, uh, more forward-looking designs, I think it's, it's it's a really, really cool thing. Um, whether we're going to get that on ARM to the same degree, I, I just can't really see it at the moment because it does seem to be mobile-orientated. Um, but I guess we'll just need to wait and see. But it is really, for me... Um, really going to be interesting to see how all of this shakes out with this new uh, NVIDIA SOC that's coming um, that seemingly has a lot of good performance on it. And I guess previously NVIDIA were kind of like um, banking on the Windows ARM translation layer, but now there's actually an alternative there and I'm going to be curious to see if it's actually better, if there is actually NVIDIA driver support for it. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But you know, this is the kind of like the big picture stuff from Valve here. It is essentially, you know, again hijacking the Xbox ethos. You know, everything would be a Steam machine at some point, which I think is hugely, hugely exciting. 